more than less than 18 months uh, would be available and so on and so forth. So there are a number of such positives. In this environment, we have almost, I would say, perfect guest to address all of us and share his experiences. He is at the intersection of healthcare, entrepreneurship, uh, of course, uh, COVID, and uh, I would say uh, building a high rocket brand of a success which is unparalleled. So, Dr. Com uh, Velu's uh, company, Thyrocade, today operates, I believe, in 10,000 cities, collects some data from in 10 countries and processes more than 4 lakh uh, tests per day. That's the kind of brand uh, he has built. And you'll be surprised that he is one entrepreneur who has not raised money from VCs. He has gone, self-booted the company and uh, uh, went straight to IPO. But if you look at his background, it's such a humble background. Uh, for, for a job interview, he slept for three nights on a railway platform. And from there, he has pivoted as an entrepreneur to be a mathematician, to a PhD, and then an entrepreneur by himself uh, as a, uh, a thyroid care. Friends, we have an infection. Again, as we, at Time Mumbai, we have been working very closely with him. He is he's our favorite speaker at various forums. We are happy to have him as a, as a webinar today. He is an infectious, I would say, motivator, a hilarious, multilingual uh, storyteller, and of, of course, the managing director of Tyro Care, Dr. Valu Ramani. Valu, over to you. Thank you. Uh, friend, guide. yeah. Yeah, thank you, uh, Atul. Thank you, Arisha. Thank you, Naveen. Thank you, Sabnam, who have been in frequent touch with us. Thank you all in uh, Thai, Mumbai. Thank you all those who I see some of the names uh, from uh, Thai Coimbatore also. So we'll be very happy to talk to you on what is the current uh, stress and uh, what learnings we have had in this 180 days of uh, COVID journey, what way it impacts the overall business and what are the uh, opportunities for the entrepreneurs to do things better, impactful. So let me spend the first half of my talk on uh, the COVID as a uh, pandemic. Word COVID was not known to anyone in December 2020. <coughs> that is uh, 2019, December 31st night. All of us toasted a happy new year. We did not know what is there available in 2020. Today, people, everybody wants to skip 2020. That's bad it is. Yes, it all started from China in the uh, early December. China did not be, did not remain transparent till it all reached to almost all locations in the world. All international airports received samples of the virus in the lungs of people who traveled. And uh, it hit more the Western cousins than the Asian cousins. It has uh, hit the richer countries more than the poorer countries. And it has hit the high medical infrastructure countries than the low medical infrastructure countries. So if you look at it, uh, the happiness we can have today, if at all we want to derive some, we have six deaths per million, whereas the five major European and the UK and the US put together, we can call them as rich cousins. They are somewhere around 400 to 500 deaths per million. Believe me, we are only six deaths per million. Infected, how many infected newspapers and news reporters and television channels will always want to panic people. So they will always tell India has now become the fourth in the number of infected. It will soon reach number one in infected. The virus will not see any difference. The virus will get to every man. Every man has to get exposed. So the infected will be high and more you test, more will be infected. Whether you test or not, still infected will remain and India will become number one in infected because China is not talking truth, otherwise China could be one. 
Having said that, what keeps India's deaths per million low? So it's not just the lockdown and uh, lockdown is not reducing death per million. Uh, the number of uh, beds available will reduce the death per million. So the government now should worry about not the number of infected, the government should worry about having adequate ICCUs and ventilators if a patient needs. So what makes India to have a delayed uh, peak and uh, milder COVID? So you all know uh, India is an in country. Mean age of India is 28, mean age of China is 38, mean age of Western cousins is 48. So number of people above the age of 60 in India are far low in Western world, especially in the UK, it is far, far high. And uh, it kills more old people, it doesn't kill young people. So when I read about China death pattern, I understood it is affecting the world more. So India is an young country, India will not have that fury. This was my talk. I've been on Twitter and I have been tweeting very positively to motivate people that don't just extrapolate, India will be different. So the age of India is helping. And uh, number two, the immunity of India. You all know India has poor hygiene, poor uh, uh, child mortality rates, which means uh, uh, Western cousins were uh, in a rich environment, uh, hygienic environment, uh, no pathogen around, and India had uh, come from villages and uh, was under huge disease burden. But let me tell you, because we had a disease burden, because we had an unhygienic condition, our body knew a lot of pathogens. And for us, this COVID is one more pathogen. And for the rich persons, it is the pathogen. So we are less affected. Trust me, these are all said to be contributing. I am not telling all final, but somewhere we have something to correlate to tell why are we seen mild by the virus. The next one is uh, the countries which have long more death. Countries have lost death, less death. When you look at it, the countries which are having tuberculosis burden are having less death. So BCG was around for us for the last uh, 80, 90 years. And all of us have seen it. And it looks like the rich cousins who said, uh, you know, we are rich guys, we are not underdeveloped. This disease belongs to the poor countries. We don't need vaccination. Could be that also a reason. So is a reason of uh, malaria. So I don't know malaria alone, BCG alone, tuberculosis and uh, immunity and age, but we are blessed. So I want all of you to first relax. Uh, we aren't that bad. But the uh, worry is, we are bad in that sense. We don't have a medical infrastructure even to handle 40 deaths per million. When it comes to 40 deaths per million, our hospital scenario could be worse than what is seen in developed countries, 400 deaths per million. God has been kind enough, though the virus has come in January. Today we are in mid-June. We are still given time to scale up infrastructure and put up hospitals. Trust me, there is no other way than giving an oxygen to your... Doctor, energy. doctor, yes. a little louder, can you speak? Yeah, there is no other way except uh, yeah. creating a medical infrastructure. A man dying without oxygen, he is, uh, you understand what is Black Lives Matter. The man died without oxygen. So that is one thing government should avoid, find out how best it can be supported. So, have we escaped? Answer is no. And all of us will get exposed to Bachi Nai Sakta hai. Government only put lockdown by telling that 21 days we will win the war. 21 lockdowns cannot win the war. The war was war. War will be war. So let us accept that. Koi bach nahi sakta hai. This virus is not going to go away. We have to become prepared. The good news is many people who got exposed will not be infected because the virus is taken care of by the body without your knowledge. Of the infected, 90% will not have a necessity to go to a hospital. Mild symptoms, two, three days, self-quarantine, home quarantine, done. 
of all the 90% uh, who have gone to the hospital will come back because they have managed to escape. Only that remaining will go. In other words, high immunity, you won't know you got exposed. Low average immunity, you know you got exposed, but you don't need to go to hospital. Low immunity, you go to hospital and you come out. And no immunity, you have to go. So this is unfortunate with some percentage of people. As I said, it is too low. Please be relaxed first. And then be careful. Masking is must. I think had we started masking in February itself, our problem could have been much more managed. Trust me, masking is not just carrying a mask. Masking completely to take care of you is most important. Do that. So, governments are mishandling, administration is mishandling. None of them know how to handle. And they are not intentionally mishandling. They are unable to take decisions. But having said that, the virus is around. Peak probably somewhere in the end of the year it will peak and it will remain with us for five, six years till adequate number of people have developed immunity towards this. Whether <coughs> immunity is done by the virus itself or we create an immune, uh, what you call a vaccine, is to be seen. If vaccine comes very late, immunity has been largely done by this virus. I don't see a vaccine coming anywhere before December 2020. And there is no drug seen every day. Somebody is uh, putting in internet and putting in television channel. This is the drug which helps. This is the drug. Trust me, nothing is a true drug. All will help you to alleviate the symptoms when it goes to your symptoms, which is uh, in the last stages. So that is about it. I am not uh, scaring people. I am not uh, making people to be overconfident. I am of that opinion. We must cautiously handle. The complete system will be different. Complete uh, things will be different. All of all of you, if not all, 90% of you are thinking that normalcy will come back. Trust me, it won't come back. You have to adapt and adjust to your new normal. New normal will be very different. Smile of a man is gone. The way in which we were hugging, we were networking, all are challenged. So the way in which we were using our hands to open, close doors, lifts, uh, staircase walking style has changed for people. Trust me, what hands done will be done by legs and a lot of uh, appliances will accordingly be changing their uh, switches, locations, controls, everything. What I say, want to say is this virus is going to change our living style our uh, social habits, everything completely. So let me uh, tell you in general, what is that industries which it will collapse and what are those industries it will positively uh, support. There could be thousands of in industries, but I classify them into 10 and I will tell you what will be the worst hit first. The worst hit is uh, airlines. Now, for the last 20 days, the flights are flying, passengers are not flying. Passengers don't have confidence to fly. The bureaucrats are telling uh, a quarantine this end, a quarantine that end. Atrocities. I don't think airlines will be able to be on domestic flight even for 50% of the fleet, for 50% of the capacity will take one year. 100% of the fleet domestic, 100% uh, uh, capacity will take two years. International flights may take five years. So in airline industry is completely gone. It is going to be a distress. Second one is the hotels and uh, the hospitality industry. Sorry, before that, the travel and tourism. Travel was option and all of us were traveling either with a 50,000 budget or a 50 lakh budget depending on our so pocket. Every year, twice or alternate years, all have come down. Kashmir will not be Kashmir. Goa will not be Goa. Bali will not be Bali. Mauritius will not be Mauritius. Travel and tourism will have a huge hit. The next one, I said uh, hospital, sorry, hotels and hospitality. 
every city has uh, so many star hospitals two star three star to five star to seven star every hospital hotels having banquet halls ranging from 200 people to 2000 people across the country so much of food so much of uh, engagement so much of uh, cocktail dinners all are going to have a tough time to have back in place normally now in between a lot of industries are there some of them will be positively slightly hit some of them may be negatively slightly hit we, we don't know till the pandemic is not over so it's very difficult or premature to tell which scripts in the market will rose to rise which will not which may not rise having said that the best supported surging industry will be healthcare no one knew what is body now everybody knows what is antibody <laughs> no one knew what is infection today people know what is oxygen no one knew what is glucometer people know what is in what is ventilator so what has been happening in this last uh, uh, six months is out of the 7.5 billion population 6 billion population no health care priority of health care importance of health care they don't no more will va uh, value the extra bungalows the extra resorts extra aircrafts they will all be worried about that extra five years of life which they can get by testing in time diagnosing in time and taking care of their health so all all expenditure pie diagram will get reoriented majority will be shrunk and the healthcare will improve so healthcare is going to be directly spent more by the common man insurance will now suddenly become a solution because all were thinking may nahi marega padosi hi marega abhi ab samajh mein aayega main bhi kisi ke padosi hu so everyone will also knock the insurance door insurance will spend more government will spend more only 2 3% was spent by government and uh, government today has plans to do 10% of gdp to be spent which means a lot of money will come this money will not come from the top of the pyramid to the pyramid it will come from the bottom of the pyramid to the pyramid which means it will change the dynamics the smaller cities smaller uh, hospitals will do better bigger hospitals will have a constraint of price control to lot of other things so healthcare will be very different if i have to sum up for the last 20 years if healthcare had been growing 14 percent cagr healthcare will grow double 30 percent cagr for next 20 years that's how i visualize the power of healthcare the second best industry will be wellness fitness nutrition uh, wellness is not sickness wellness is before becoming sick people will be very keen to find out how to improve their wellness that is uh, hormones vitamins uh, nutrients everything then fitness uh, we were not willing to touch our uh, toe because it was difficult today you have no choice you have to touch the toe unless otherwise you have a fitness your immunity will not be improved so fitness will become important so is nutrition kuch bhi khate the kuch bhi peete the be is aap peete the sab things have to be reworked you should know what calories go inside how much it goes in what is going in is waste or it is useful so everything will have an industry so i believe these three uh, uh, wellness fitness nutrition also will be a huge business now suddenly if you see the country is having too much of consumables of covid ppe gloves masks everything is manufactured abundant which means what all hygiene related all companies which make products which will help you to avoid infection will be a huge industry so these three industries will certainly be a very powerful way of uh, um, the future and uh, let me also tell you healthcare also will not be the same healthcare there i, I use a term called novid novid is non covid we use it internally for understanding easily we were having 1 crore 1.3 crore per day two days before that ganti bajao din within two days after ganti bajao din it became 1.35 crore became 1.35 lakhs that means 99 percent of the business collapsed for the last six uh, sorry uh, six weeks almost eight weeks no business no non-covid business 
अरे एंटायर कंट्री वाज डूइंग इन 365 डेज ओनली नॉन कोविड सडनली इट स्टॉप्ड नाउ सडनली कोविड इज राइजिंग सो फास्ट इट इज राइजिंग इट माइट ओवरटेक नोवेट सो व्हाट डज दैट मीन दैट मींस द हेल्थ केयर इंडस्ट्री विल बी डबल कोविड प्लस नॉन कोविड दैट्स नोवेट and hospital will get split into covid hospital and novid hospital because no one wants to go for their uh, uh, pregnancy monitoring into a covid hospital so hospitals will get split into like male toilet and female toilet and it is that simple is no meaning in converting uh, one floor into covid one floor into novid over it has to be either i am novid or covid and india will have an advantage i am very happy about to uh, uh, share that from my anger my opinion my view uh, it was told uh, uh, us is number 1 will be number 1 till china approves it it was expected another 20 years china will approve based upon the gdp of uh, the us and the uh, shrinking and the china growing but according to me this covid has brought in so much distress to china they won't they will never become number 1 india may become number 1 before china this is a very positive thinking i want to all of all people who live in india to feel this is an opportunity that the all bigs have failed and the one who was running have problem and we were walking we must run so i don't see a, any challenge in india becoming number 1 before china becomes and my positive mind says it is 2040 to 50 all you guys who are in 30s and 40s will see india as a super power maybe we are all in 60 will not be able to see congratulations for all youth please make sure you make best out of it and let me introduce you two words uh, uh, three words uh, one is immunity another is frugality third one is prosperity immunity is most important i don't think you can purchase from a medical store and consume it and i believe i have good immunity all people who are born poor have higher immunity than all people who are rich that is what is i said rich cousins and poor cousins we were five children and in a village and the doctor was 10 km away and we don't know the doctor what time he comes to the clinic we don't know his phone number there was no phone there was no connectivity all five children uh, alternate days will have a covid kind of syndromes symptoms and mother would never take us to the hospital all will or why one child died because it didn't have uh, withstanding power so if they didn't take us to the hospital fast that means they allowed the immune system to raise but today's young mothers and fathers what do they do morning 6 o'clock they monitor the temperature before 10 o'clock they monitor four times and 11 o'clock they both have taken leave and they are in a clinic and they are telling the doctor to give antibiotic because doctor mera ye ki beta hai wo risk nahi lena hai ab do antibiotics de dijiyega you have killed the immunity sorry to say uh, i want uh, all those who have good immunity to touch the parents feet because it was they who gave you you didn't acquire it anywhere in between you just can't acquire it please take care of that immunity is very important you might slightly improve it by some kind of uh, nutrition some kind of uh, advices so immunity is most important as i said uh, high immunity you will never have a problem a low immunity will have frequent problems the second one is frugality i must tell you this word i have loved so much because my mother was highly frugal then after marriage i found my wife was more frugal than me i learned frugality from all around i loved frugality <laughs> i want all of you to understand being frugal when you are poor is natural though some people still don't being frugal when you are rich is super power and uh, i you all know that i have a listed company and uh, i can afford to buy anything i can afford to do anything please please follow me from various uh, a media my communications you will realize a man who is frugal is the most powerful man the luxury in life is frugality please make sure you will have it again frugality cannot be learned from neighbor it has to be learned from parents if you are parents please make sure the children understand what money means to rich poor what money means to stomach and uh, and no send uh, tongue everything please teach it so that you don't have to unnecessarily work too much to keep your children happy for long if you have immunity and if you have frugality what you will have is prosperity 
and uh, i believe india has immunity also and india has a fair frugality we don't throw like money like what the western guys are throwing <coughs> british your prosperity will be there i was asked to talk for some time and give a break so that uh, some kind of uh, energy can be uh, uh, raised from the uh, audience also please go ahead and put all your questions we will use that questions to communicate the rest of my wishes thank you and back to arif so doc uh, you said you are very reasonably confident with positive thinking that india would become number 1 what gives you that confidence see when i started business i felt i will become number 1 because i'm uh, you know uh, i have seen one movie some 40 years back hum kisi se kam nahi ye ye bolne wali cheez nahi hai sochne wali cheez hai बोलता है तो चार लोग तप्पड़ देगा सोचने से हम बेहतर बनते हैं एंड आई हैव अ रीजन टू बिलीव वी डोंट हैव एनी माइनस पॉइंट वी आर वेरी स्ट्रांग इन एच आर वी आर वेरी स्ट्रांग इन टेक्नोलॉजी पूरा हिंदुस्तान से जाकर ही जो डेवलप्ड मार्केट है उधर दुनिया में सबको धन वन बना के बैठा था सो आई एम ऑल्सो टेलिंग यूपी बिहार झारखंड विल प्रॉस्पर बिकॉज ऑल माइग्रेंट स्टाफ गॉन फ्रॉम मेट्रो सिटीज विल क्रिएट अज इम्पैक्ट देर i want all of you to understand till 2020 all powers all prosperities were islands post 2020 our entire world have a cloud prosperity entire india will have a cloud prosperity so i am pretty sure with the digital journey into rural villages with the ability to do business with sitting from anywhere today i am 75th day sitting in my room and i am conducting business much more stronger Than what I used to while traveling unnecessarily. So things okay, that's... are different and make use of it. You won't become by default powerful country. You have to strive and you have to run and you have to keep running. What's your view about see, during the any recession, the new and the young startups really create jobs and they blossom and. Uh, they become the real disruptors in the world or in in their own industry segments this is pandemic it is not the recession what how much faith you have in the startups in india changing india the startups in india were going wrong i have been monitoring across the country all of them were wanting to hit the headlines of or the second page or third page of economic times by doing some kind of uh, a transaction some kind of uh, uh, you know an aggression trust me business is a marathon race entrepreneurship is a marathon race as you all know for 17 years of my journey i did not even go for a pitching anywhere and after 17 years guys came to me and put money into my pocket against my wish i did a secondary deal i did not do a primary deal as you all you know company has not received a single rupee from anyone inside the company so what is very important is a good business model scalable business model it till money is true need and uh, you don't take money for uh, uh, you know other luxuries money only should to be for scale up and don't scale up if your business is not going to have volume advantage all businesses don't have volume advantages i have been talking in some of the forum recently let me tell you what stupid mistakes entrepreneurs do some of them have mercedes they take it to the runway some of them have jet they take it in the highway please note you have to know what you have you know you need to know whether it has scalability whether it has volume benefits whether it is going to help me in improving my balance sheet when 10 crore per turnover becomes 100 crore per turnover by default it will not it is the nature of business at the dna of business and it is the dynamics and kinetics in the balance sheet in costing in pricing in controlling everything is there so it is very important that using this pandemic citing that as a reason reorient restructure re create an environment where costs are low flow is less work is more productivity is high <coughs> and that is an option available for you please exercise it otherwise you will be once again doing the same mistake as what you were doing you did not make use of the opportunity 
see, NASCOM did a survey about the startups a month ago, and where it said that 40% of the startups would like to pivot to healthcare. Is that a good strategy? Or you would like to see 80% pivot to healthcare since the market size, as you are saying, is just going to blow up, uh, blow out of proportion. So with all said and then there is a, going to be a double size of the market. It's not going to be 10 times more. Okay. Then when it is a double size, if uh, you know, if it, there are 10 players, 10 more players can find it merry, not 100 more players. So you one should not jump into thinking that, you know, village mein aisa hi hota tha. Tomato market mein uh, bahut jada bao mein bitte pura gao tomato dal tha. <laughs> Jabhi tomato haath mein aata hai, jo, uh, uh, you know, uh, 100 rupiya kilo gaya tha, abhi 15 rupiya, 15, even 10 rupiya per kilo jaya tha. So it is very important that we, we all should move towards where we feel confident, where we, but having said that, even if 100 people will come, only that 20 who have a good business model, good efficient system will prosper, rest will suffer. What about technologies like artificial intelligence, IoT, cloud? I mean, from Indian perspective, how would that change or impact uh, in the new, new normal? See, with all said and then uh, very difficult for me to talk about other industries in healthcare industry, I will tell you, artificial intelligence is very important. 90% of the patients are normally normal. 9% of the patients are normally abnormal. 1% of the patients are abnormally abnormal. So what is normally normal, the computer itself should release because it should know what defines normally normal. If it is CT scan, MRI scan, all of them 90% of the time normally normal. So 9% of the time you use one doctor and that 1% of the time you use in consultant who is having high expertise. But if you are going to use high expertise for entire 100%, you are stupid, your costs are very high. So all your IT prowess, you call it as machine learning, call it as artificial intelligence, all will be very useful only when you segmentize and see the benefits. So it is going to impact, <coughs> will reduce the cost, will improve the efficiency, will improve the profitability. Which is the number of doctors in India are one per thousand versus the Western world is five doctors uh, per thousand. So in order to maybe, I don't know whether the immunity in the rural area is very high and that's why they are not impacted much. Or is it some, because there are not enough doctors or the healthcare infrastructure in the rural areas. If you see the impact is very low there. Why is it? What is your reading about it? See, let me tell you, we are all a very, very confused uh, uh, population. What a consultant can do with uh, MD uh, and DM, very often only 10% of what he do is, does is what he should do. Remaining should be done by a paramedic. So if you look at uh, the Aravind Eye Hospital in Madurai, what they have done, they have taken HSC pass, BSC pass, MSC pass and trained them so much. Only doctor does that 4%, 5% of what doctors should do. Rest of them are done by paramedics. So if India has less doctors, you have got enough of paramedics, produce enough paramedics. I don't say don't produce doctors, but that should not stop you in delivering solutions. So a kind of reorienting yourself, creating an efficient system, where everybody is contributing and you as a doctor con uh, conclude the therapy in very effective way, sitting in one location, instead of handling 10 patients, if you can handle 1000 patients, find out how you can do it. What are your views about the alternate therapies? Ayurveda to homeopathy to Unami to many other, which Ayush is uh, trying to promote. I think Allopathy was uh, expected to produce a huge result in the last 50 years. People started ignoring non-allopathy. But allopathy could not solve many problems. It could only reduce some pains. It could only help in reducing some symptoms. And uh, some treatment was possible, but 90% of the illnesses today are not uh, treated, treated by uh, allopathy. So I am of that opinion. All forms of medicine will take care of 5-10% of illnesses. We don't know which and all. 
we need to explore we need to use it you should not just because you have got an allopathy uh, uh, refuse and hate the non allopathic medical solutions they have a place to do all problems they may not solve find out what it can solve here is a another question coming up which is again on this is on thyroid care if you had to restart thyroid care hmm. what would you do <laughs> not only restarting <laughs> if i have to restart my life i want the same village the same poverty same struggles same parents same jayanti janta same vt railway stations eating same drc job same wife same risk taking at the same age doing focusing only on thyroid and jo rasta mein main aaya hu se behtar rasta mujhe nahi nazar aa raha hai i must tell you guys many of you keep asking me a question what one point you would love to change if you, you know you you were given an option trust me today it is so big only because all were fell in place so i don't think anything i will change but having said that let me tell you i would have, i should have moved a bit a little faster because where i am in 25 years i could have been in 10 years but having said that first 10 years there was no mobile there was no android there was no nothing available so i don't think anything i can change I, I <laughs> but looking at newer technologies newer ways of thing and then you may want to change the business model no in that way if today i want to you know one thing i will tell you you know majority of people in the entrepreneur world will think that dr velumani is a very bold risk taking entrepreneur i don't take risks very high risks i will teach you what is risk there are two kinds of risk one risk upside is too good downside is too little in another risk downside is too much upside is too little i know the difference and i will take only that risk where downside is too little upside is too good so if you ask me nowadays i am not taking that good that many risks because i am an investor invested company 10000 families across the country as employees and franchises and another 10000 as investors i need to take responsibilities so nowadays me kuch risk nahi leta hu ek zamana tha discuss or decide discuss or decide ek zamana tha discussion nahi hota tha decisions hote the aaj kal discussion hi ho raha hai decision raj nayar raj you have a question i say you can unmute and ask the question Raj, unmute raj unmute your mic i have, uh, yeah. i have no, i don't have a question i only have appreciation for the straight talk and the inspiring talk thank you, thank thank you, you my doctor thank you i am known for a being blunt and uh, open and transparent in communicating so many people are avoiding me but i am sure those who <laughs> want to, to have a closer romance with the truth will talk to me because i I don't mean the words. I talk risk as risk, and I say safe as safety. Really appreciate that. Thank you very much. But then, Doc, you are saying mm. uh, you are blunt, outspoken. Mm. Now, do you think the girl, let's say Maharashtra state, mm. is it being managed well? It's very Because difficult. There is a lot of issues of no, flip flop in policies, every day changing. is it the learning correction process or is it the inaptitude what is it what's your reading i think what can uh, be done to improve now i think all states have different different problems some are uh, bjp ruled some are the uh, opposition ruled and uh, maharashtra is a state where not just one opposition is ruling three oppositions are ruling and all the three oppositions also have <laughs> their own say in every policy decision so if you ask me i wouldn't single out maharashtra metros are bad and uh, if we were all proud so far in the last 50 years mumbai bada mumbai bada delhi bada delhi bada bada me bada problem bhi bada hai so it is not the uh, failure of uh, the machinery it was not known that less uh, space per man less square feet per man is a big threat for viral infection which uh, finally proves that uh, the metro cities have more problem because people are put in one room all of them use one toilet all of them travel in that way walk in that way uh, hygiene plays zero role in uh, their lifestyle 
so i won't blame state government though state government could have created a infrastructure in this last 75 days bit faster not only india all over the not only in maharashtra all over the all over the country creating more beds should have been the priority not identifying more positive we were we were spending on a wrong goal i am not referring only to one state it is all over the country so now from the another question coming up here is in the next 6 months how do you see the economy opening up in terms of uh, control over the virus and so on and so forth you gave some numbers but do you think we'll reach the peak say in july you said july august you say and uh, what does it mean in terms of uh, such a long period uh, what happens to the economy the economy will take its own time to come back the stock market and the index in the national stock exchange and bse are not economy index they are index of the power of money to buy and sell uh, economy is productivity economy is employment economy is work back and back but if you ask me today the biggest challenge is even if everything is opened employee is not keen to come to office because he has one or two years reserve to live and he thinks that may abhi virus ke samna nahi karunga half of the second second salary at home they are sacrificing that job many women whose husbands were decently earning were looking for better income today they tell for two years i can't do that so if you look at it the number of people resuming to is going to be limited the hr intensive hr intensive at the floor if the business is there that business will take much longer time to come back and the work from home will continue a bit little uh, faster those industries which are it enabled where businesses can be managed monitored controlled promoted using it will be able to pick up faster but if you ask me it is not going to be before 36 months we will have the manufacturing facilities the floor driven uh, efficiencies all will fall in place and with the migrants moving away from the workplace it is going to be a tough time whether they resume yes or no how many will come back when they will come back is all depending upon abhi to mumbai mein offer letter dega to bolta hai sab abhi mumbai mein peak hai to hum kaisa ho mumbai aayega so the fear has to first subside so it's going to take time i won't be able to give you anything as 3 months 6 months 9 months but i am of that opinion within 36 months we should be doing even double than what we are doing because people will come back and do more work than what they used to do earlier there's another question here which is very positive in a sense with observation that people as you have said before also people have picked up few scientific terms now people many people know what is epidemiologist or virologist what is flattening curve and many technical terms plus they are watching the vaccine development they are seeing the breakthroughs they are seeing the setbacks they are seeing the misjudgments they are seeing the various such which is in indian culture specifically where failure was not considered as a learning acceptable thing do you think this will inject a scientific temper in the indian minds now and will have a huge impact uh, over the years i think uh, overall uh, life is now more important uh, for a man than what it was earlier earlier man thought it is taken for granted our life span uh, even in india was 63 years uh, 50 years back today it is 73 years we earned 10 years in 50 years this virus seems to wiping it out by half half of it so man's uh, dream was to live long live without pain live without uh, distress so the industries which are around that will continue to get attention be it manufacturing be it research and uh, innovations be it uh, creating a kind of uh, floor uh, operational excellencies it hr everything will be more skewed and uh, uh, towards the health care so man will now not believe that somebody is taking health care i need not know it 
everybody wants to see how italy curve is now how new york curve is now how us curve is now and how china has become flat and they know it is a jute so to the large extent farmer man he is becoming a scientist healthcare expert in his own way it doesn't need a, a medical degree it needs a common sense and intelligence and a lot of people are making a lot of sense to me though they are not medical and uh, uh, people will pick up what is essential but that can extend from beyond healthcare as a startup entrepreneur so today they are failure averse so the, if the culturally we start accepting failure as a given it is a start restart learning relearning and so and so forth then the entrepreneur also will take a bigger risk yes i think uh, the instead of just copying a successful model from somewhere be innovative and be creative and try to you know change the world type of a uh, uh, business model yeah, let me tell you i am 60 years old what i have learned in this last 6 months i have not learned in last 60 years if a man of 60 years can tell it a man of 30 years will have a huge learning in this uh, entire uh, last uh, 100 days and uh, we, he will know how to act react uh, how to resume decisions are wrong how to uh, take care if if things fail what is that i will have to do so a lot of learning comes for a common man in general for a family man to run his family and for a business man to plan and do and he would know that nothing can be taken for granted risk is risk any time anything can happen so the entire approach of business for an entrepreneur today will be very different from the learning which he is making not necessarily only to healthcare or in healthcare it is every business environment now we have few minutes left right would you what would be your parting message to all of us yeah i have some parting message to all of you let me uh, put it in my own way if you have to succeed in business you must have a focus gentlemen without focus there is nothing you can achieve there are only two kinds of people on this earth one who focused other could not succeed or one who has succeeded other could not focus so focus is most important risk taking is essential without taking risk you won't be able to achieve anything and i think if you have to have a story to tell you should have taken a risk and the bigger the risk the stronger is the story entire business is only an it hr logistics uh, there is nothing truly otherwise manufacturing and services are not truly the prowess the prowess is it hr and logistics without these three businesses cannot uh, succeed you take all industries in india successful all industries globally successful you will find these three contributing for 90% of the success scale is important if you don't scale up you won't have volume and if you don't have a scale up and volume you will not have a power to price it power to purchase power to people so volume gives monopoly gives ppp purchase power people power and pricing power and of course pricing is most important many people go wrong in pricing i was the only stupid man according to the industry who priced it too low people felt that velu mani vapas denti janta mananga jayega they didn't understand uh, the country is a poor country and uh, what is sold without error at a cheaper rate will be the leader so have a good quality without quality you just can't uh, yeah, survive with good quality you don't demand for better premium you will get very little with quality a quality is sold at a cost less than the ordinary you will be the monopoly and you will be the leader and that is what i have done for the last 25 years as i said earlier also marathon is business success is not a problem sustaining the success is the biggest problem and don't peak very early you should become richest at age of 55 not at 35 not at 28 because what is power is sustainable success and i wish the entire thai family thai in india thai mumbai and thai india and thai global a very strong very powerful motivating journey and keep motivating youth and uh, less of drinks less of uh, uh, show lot of motivation i am very happy to see every other day some kind of education is happening which otherwise was very costly now this is a most powerful way of educating 
and get the inspiring leaders to tell, amplify, and motivate the rural entrepreneurs so that India as a country still is $2,000 per capita income compared to the Western cousins who are $40,000. So poverty is power. Poverty will make India getting prosperity. Thank you, Harish. Thank you, Atul. Thank you, Navin. And uh, I wish all of you a very safe. Thank you, doctor. I think you are a case study in uh, inspiration. You are an infectious motivator. No wonder many people, you are known as a Rajni kind of entrepreneurs. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow in tomorrow's set of webinars. Stay safe, everyone. See you and goodbye. Thank you. Okay.